Hello, well in this film I'm going to talk about leather quality and leather quality specifically for belts. And I was asked actually fairly recently by a friend, could I put a buckle on or sort of, it's like a belt blank he had, I don't know exactly where he got it from, I think he, he found it when he was going through some cupboards and things. But anyway, I said yeah no, no problem at all, I'll, I'll pop, you know, pop your buckle on etc. So we took the measurements and I popped the buckle on. Anyway. I was a bit intrigued because I looked at this belt and thought, oh, that's a very interesting edge binding on there, or edge colouring. It looked lovely and smooth. And then I looked a bit more closely at the sur surface of the leather and I thought, hmm, that looks a very smooth, regular leather. And of course, as soon as I started working on it, I realised this is technically a leather belt, but it is one of the reasons I started making belts. And this is typical of a high street belt, as I call them. I'm being a little bit unfair, perhaps. It's not, I shouldn't really be too generic. But anyway, kind of belt you might get from a chain store going fairly reasonably priced. Let's put it like that. Because what it is actually, it's, it is leather. But it's lots of minced up leather, like chipboard, compressed together, given a, like a roll of coating. <laughs> And then because it's all going to sag and go nasty, a bit of cloth sort of canvas material on the back of it. And then a sort of bit of heavy duty covering over the sort of edges. And I have to say, I do not like it one bit. And it really just goes against all the things that I stand for with belts. <laughs> this belt, it looks fine at the moment, it looks quite nice actually. Um, but You'll wear that for a year and it will sag, the holes will stretch, the whole thing will start to go a bit uh, and not look very nice. And that is because it is quite simply, well, to be honest, in my, in my book, not the best kind of belt. And really that's what got me on to wanting to talk about belts a little bit. And so I thought I would show you. So this is what I call a belt. One of the Bucklehurst belts, needless to say. But it's a lovely full grain bit of bridal back, so a lovely bit of leather. Um, bridal back, it's off the back of the animal, it's, it's the straighter, stronger, more regular bit of leather and it gives you lovely belts. And it's full grain, full thickness, a very strong belt that will last you for years. And with these belts that I make, they will last you years simply because it is a full grain leather. It's been properly tanned. I round all the edges on my belts and I think that's an important detail. <laughs> Going back to the shop belt, it's just a flat cut off edge. But the rounding actually means it doesn't dig into your hips or into your side at all as you wear it. It's a little detail, but all of this is about detail. And I use oval holes because they're stronger than round holes and they're less prone to stretch. Belt like this, I've put saddle crease lines down because it's a nice traditional quality. And this of course is pit tanned, vegetable tanned leather. So it's beautifully curried leather that is really nice and smells nice. It really is just nice quality stuff. And I mean, I've put up a film on making belts so I've go into some of the details, but I do things like I skive the undersurface where the buckle is so that it lies flatter on the front of the wearer. It just looks neater and makes the person look a bit slimmer, if anything. And little details like getting the leather underneath the buckle um, tab there, the keeper, the belt keeper, make it easier. I round the underside and colour it and polish it just so it goes in nicely. And it's little details like this that this belt will last for years, but it means it will last for years being a very nice belt. <laughs> so that's my sort of what I call my standard range of belts and the quality I think is you know, great. I know my reviews on my website and from my customers and the feedback, people are very pleased with them. So that's what I call a proper belt. I will show you some of the other belts I make because I do also make some slightly different variations. Well, again, this is a bridle back and it's a hand carried leather. So during the tanning process, the fibers are all being brushed down the same way. And what you end up with is 
the same sort of thickness really but very very strong leather because all the fibers are going the same way it's got a hard surface it's quite hard to sort of feel and touch um, because of all the sort of handwork involved in carving a leather like this it does mean it's quite a lot more expensive so with the sort of premium belts where I'm putting in a lot of stitching I'll use this uh, Sedgwick's leather in this case which is a nice good strong leather so all the levers are nice it's just that some of them they've had more refinement I suppose during the carrying process and then another kind of leather I enjoy using is this is again it's pit tanned like all the others this one is a more natural state leather in as much as it's been um, tanned in oak bark so very specifically um, there's only one tannery now in the UK if not the world that does oak bark tanning and this is a belt from that the well, leather from that tannery again bridal backs like the others and with this when you look at it very closely you can see the little scars and little sort of abrasions of the animal's life in the grain of the leather so it's been hand dyed by the tannery and they just do it light enough that you can still see all the little detail. It's the sort of detail you'll get on my bucket bags, but it's what you'll get on the high quality levers where they're left in their naturalish state and not, in the case of the shop belt, rolled over, painted over, or whatever <laughs> frightful things happen. And I mean, with this, you've even got some of the veining on the inside of the belt, which is more prominent where the leather was attaching to membranes. But again, all rounded off, all polished, all scythed on its edges. These particular ones I've been putting copper rivets, satellite rivets on, oval holes, English point. And it just gives you a belt that will go on for years and years. And as with all my belts, I have quite a collection I wear myself, but I like to wear my belts and actually test them out and make sure they stand up well in the field. So I've added one of these to my collection now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I enjoy having different selections. But yeah, they're, they're, they're nice belts. But that, that's what I call a belt. Decent quality, nice style. I just want to share that because I, I, I was initially spurred to making belts because of, frankly, I didn't like what I was seeing in the shops and I thought we can do better. And that's, this one was a good reminder for me. If, if ever I needed reminding, I mean, I love doing leather work, so I didn't really need any reminding, but if I did <laughs> need reminding about belt quality, then just doing this repair on this particular shop made belt, frankly said it all for me, but there you are. So, something I'm passionate about and hope you found that interesting. Okay then, bye bye.